Hey everyone, Freak here with something very different from my usual stuff on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Dungeons and & Dragons. And for those of you who have followed my Twitter uh, somewhat recently, I've tweeted a couple of different interactions that I've had uh, in the couple of D&D campaigns that I have. And a few people have asked that I make uh, either recap videos or I stream them or something else. I am almost definitely never going to stream D&D just because... I think the requirements are a bit too high and there's a lot to ask of everyone else. And um, because everyone that I play with are other rioters, it's nice that we get to talk about things that are privileged, being that we all work in the same company. Um, and it just not something I want to subject other people to at all. However, uh, I am going to do, uh, to try it out, recaps uh, or something, storytelling or, or some other, about the campaigns that I'm in. So. Uh, this first episode will be catching up on where we've gotten in the second campaign that I play, and I'm sure at a certain point uh, I'll actually name them for your guys' sake, but for now, um, this is going to be the campaign of the ant monsters, um, because it features an enemy that we have yet to find a good name for, and I'm calling them ant monsters. Uh, so, uh, this campaign is only three three or two sessions in so far. Um, yeah, it might only be two sessions in actually. Um, and let's talk about what's happened so far. Uh, I've decided as well to make it more interesting that I'm going to uh, not quite MS Paint, but I'm gonna be doing about that quality of art uh, using GIMP and drawing my characters and the world we are in. So here we go, I have drawn out the party. Uh, in the campaign of Invasion of the Ant Monsters. Uh, so we've got two Wood Elves and a uh, human. And this is a very interesting world. It's an interesting setting. Uh, the DM uh, specifically wanted to play with only three people, or at least a very small party in general, uh, and also wanted to make his own custom world. Uh, in his words, it was because he didn't want to have to learn other worlds, but I think it's also very compelling uh, to not get to really lean on other tropes uh, as a player. Uh, I myself am still very new to Dungeons & Dragons. I first started playing uh, right around Summer Finals 2017 of NALCS, and so I've only played, let's say, a dozen or so sessions of the game, and this campaign started at level 1, and we're now level 3 because we've gotten a lot of experience in our uh, escapades so far. Okay, so uh, we'll get to the characters in a little bit. Let's do a real, re a real quick recap of the world map. Uh, again, MS Paint-tastic, but it's actually in GIMP. Uh, all that's known of the world is that there's two continents and a vast ocean. Uh, no one has ever been able to traverse outside very far via the ocean and get back, so no one has any idea what's out there. There could be land masses north, east, and west, and south, and we'd have no idea because the ships never come back when they go very far. Uh, even this little strait in between the two continents, uh, very dangerous. Uh, the entire point of the campaign is the world is super duper duper dangerous. Even your home's not very safe, so have fun. Um, which I think is very compelling, having, having an incredibly, incredibly difficult uh, world to live in. And in fact, all the encounters we've been in so far have been insanely difficult. Um, being that most of us are uh, wood elves, we've come from this uh, wooded encampment to sort of the southwest of the southern continent. Uh, this uh, diagram is not really to scale, and I don't have the official map on hand right now, but this is the general setup. Uh, there are three major towns in the southern hemisphere, and we're part of a sort of druidic circle within the woods. If you go any further into the woods, there's really crazy beasts that can kill you outright. You hide from almost everything. Uh, my character worked as a caravan guard to uh, guard uh, shipments going across uh, these, these roads and into the towns, and uh, as the DM described my backstory, uh, caravans typically employ about 20 guards at a time to scare off orcish war bands from invading and killing everyone. Yes, it requires 20 guards, so that power numbers is enough that they go, eh, let's not. Um, so when we started the campaign, uh, we have uh, me. Uh, we'll go back to the, the characters here. I am drawn on the top left. Uh, one thing that he uh, also talked about is that uh, what else typically shorten their last names to just the first syllable and then just put an apostrophe to, to cut off the rest. Uh, the idea being that it promotes a bit of unity and that names can be a bit more similar uh, and you can find some family there. I am a, uh, a ranger, uh, the Unearthed Arcana Ranger specifically. I am a, a bow wielder, obviously, uh, as rangers should be. 
Uh, Davos Hellsbane is a paladin of vengeance. Uh, I don't know the, all the mechanics of paladins, but uh, his god is lawful good. Uh, one other interesting caveat of the setting is um, mages by themselves are not exceptionally rare, but dealing with god magic as though you're a cleric or a paladin is about as rare as if someone literally could use lay on hands in real life. Uh, that's about how rare it is. When he used Lay on Hands to cure poison in the first session, people flipped the hell out. Um, it was pretty awesome. It was actually a really good experience because everyone was like, what just happened? Then we got turned into our own druid circle because this guy has god magic, uh, which is really kind of fun. He got to kind of role play that out. Uh, Keanu Leaves is our last player. And yes, his name is Keanu Leaves. Uh, he is a moon druid. Uh, yes, of course, people will complain that moon druids are OP. By the way, we're playing 5th edition. It's the only edition of D&D that I know. Um, and I'm kind of happy about that. D&D 5e is a bit straightforward. Uh, Keanu Leaves is a moon druid. Uh, he is... Uh, that player is very, very new to Dungeons and Dragons. I think this is his first campaign. Uh, Davos has played before in the past, but um, is a bit rusty on the game. So I actually have probably the firmest grasp on the rules, despite being a, a six-month novice myself. Uh, that said, I've only ever played about three or four different classes so far, and, and never more than six levels worth uh, kind of in aggregate. So I'm still a relative novice. Our DM knows quite a bit more, and um, kind of both of us take turns explaining rules. Uh, maybe I'm over-talking a bit much as a player in trying to explain things, because obviously our DM can handle that. But if you watch my YouTube videos at all, you know that I like to explain rules and talk about things. And so um, as long as I'm not being overly pushy, I don't think he minds. Uh, so here's our party of three, right? Keanu leaves. Uh, one other thing that we're going to talk about with character creation is, uh, well, I guess it's going to be two facets. So one, uh, he makes us rolls for stats and level ups. Um, if our stat rolls are too low, we get to start over, but no one had rolls that badly. Um, and of course, we roll for health on level ups. So uh, the talk about the characters there, um, Keanu Leaves is actually really, really strong. He's got a lot of wisdom. Uh, our paladin, Davos, since he's still we're wearing medium armor for now, actually has a lot of strength, a lot of dex, and a lot of whatever his spellcasting stat is, which I think is int for paladins, but I'm not certain. Either way, he got really good stat rolls, so he's very, very powerful. Uh, he Basically, all his stats are very good. Um, and he happens, I think he happens to actually be a, a dex paladin, if I recall properly. I don't really quite remember. Uh, for me, however, uh, the only stats I have positive modifiers in at all are dex and whiz as a hunter. Um, thankfully, hunters don't need whiz that much, but uh, my con is plus zero, my strength is plus zero, my int is plus zero, and my charisma is minus one. I got very bad stat rolls, and even then, my dex after Wood Elf Racial is 16, and my whiz is 14. So I got very, very bad rolls for uh, 4d6 drop lowest. Uh, so a bit unlucky for me. Um, also, to continue adding the unlucky, um, he had us roll for health. So a uh, ranger is a, a D10 class, and I'm level 3 now, which means you start at 10 health, and then you can gain 1 to 10 HP each level up, which means at level 3, your range of health would be between 12 and 30. I have 13. I roll a 1 at level 2 and a 2 at level 3. I have almost the least possible amount of health, and I have plus zero to constitution, so I am incredibly squishy. And as I mentioned earlier, the campaign is set in a very, very deadly world, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Okay, so I am a wood elf ranger, we have a wood elf druid, and we have a human paladin. Uh, the one other thing he does with us in character creation <clears throat> is we are allowed to take a feat at level one, even if we're not variant human, in response to a flaw. Um, and so I, knowing that I'm very underpowered, said, oh, I definitely want to take a feat. And of course, being an archer, I take sharpshooter. Um, if you don't know what sharpshooter does, uh, you basically get supremely accurate. Uh, cover doesn't matter against you. And you can, take a you can take a penalty to hit in order to get a bonus to damage, which is mathematically almost always optimal. So it's basically a free DPS talent um, or uh, feat, I guess. Uh, however, in payment, I have about 750 gold worth of gambling debts uh, in the two uh, nearby towns, which, again, I'm from uh, this little uh, druid coven, and here's these two towns right here. Uh, this town specifically we'll get to in a little bit. Um, Keanu Leaves, of course, being a moon druid, uh, has 30-something temporary HP when he becomes a challenge rating 1 direwolf. He's very, very powerful. And Davos Hellsbane has like 18 AC, so he's in a decent spot right now with medium armor and some dexterity and, and, and a special shield and whatnot. Okay, so that's who our characters are. Um, one other thing I want to point out is uh, Keanu Leaves is, uh, interestingly enough, kind of the face of the party. Uh, he took a feat to get, uh, I believe it was Observant. Uh, his penalty was to take a minus five to his charisma stat, so he has 
I think like a five charisma. He's a minus three on charisma, um, but he's the face of the party. Um, as we're dealing with our druid circle down here in the southwest of the map, uh, he basically not only shortens everyone's last names, but just calls everyone by their first initial and occasionally inherently gets their name or uh, in intentionally, that's the word, intentionally gets their name wrong. So Keanu runs around just like calling people M or, hey, what's up, Glethel? When her name is Glethelai, and she's like the, the supreme druid of the druid circle. Uh, as the DM explains it, uh, they're okay being terse because it's a very deadly world and they don't have time for pleasantries. I imagine that gets worse a lot later when we get into town. Uh, that said, my character hates the nearby towns, and I think so does our, uh, our paladin, so that's going to be interesting to look at uh, dealing with all of that. Uh, so the world is full of tensions. This city right here, as we're going to pull up uh, the typing tool, we're going to use white text. Here we go. This is the town of Irrigan. And Irrigan are a bunch of jerks. Irrigan um, is a very industrialized, walled off, um, sort of racist city. I mentioned the fact that uh, the world is very dangerous. And because the world is very dangerous, uh, I mean, there are just all kinds of super, super difficult to deal with beasts and orcish war bands and stuff in, in the forest nearby. And honestly, this is probably cut a little bit too far down. This is probably forced right up here against the road as well. There's just a ton of really just will mess your day up hatred in the world. It's super deadly. Even just crossing the strait is terrible. So Irrigan had the bright idea to start deforesting the continent. If they can cut back all the trees, they can remove the habitats of all the dangerous wolves and bears and pterodactyls or whatever. Um, which, of course, being a wood elf, I very much dislike, and so I really hate Irrigan. Um, but, of course, Irrigan is powerful. They have a lot of resources, and, yeah, stuff kind of gets real. So that's kind of the world that we're in. Um, I haven't had to deal with Irrigan as a character live in the game just yet, but that's coming soon. In fact, that was one of the quests we were given uh, that we haven't done just yet uh, so far from the DM. So when we first started playing the game, session one began uh, in a dream sequence. Um, Half of our party was like restrained and stuck to some kind of a sarcophagus. Um, I wasn't found for a while, and we all kind of realized that, hey, we're level one adventurers in this very dark, dank cave, and there's this weird sticky goop on the ground that's kind of viscous and kind of oily, but, I mean, there's no good light, so it's kind of hard to tell, and uh, our paladin can't cast any spells yet, I don't think. Maybe paladins do cast spells already at level one, but either way, I don't think he casts light or anything. Um, maybe he did, and I forgot. Either way, whatever. Um, so eventually we group up as, as our level one selves and we start kind of walking around the caverns and suddenly this gigantic 10 by 10 foot ant looking monster appears and we're like that is a crazy looking ant and it like just messes stuff up if you attack it in melee it sprays acid blood at you and you take a 1d10 of damage which for level one character is pretty bad um, I managed to roll really well on my initiative roll in the dream sequence and then did about zero damage uh, throughout the rest of the fight. And uh, yeah, basically we tried to kill the ant monster. Uh, we couldn't do it. It pushed us up against the cliff, kept bleeding acid on us, and we all kind of stumbled and fell and dropped into the abyss and woke up in a cold sweat. Well, that was weird. We've never seen this creature before. You guys all had have the same dream as us? Yes, we did. Okay, what the heck was that? Uh, that's really weird. Hey, uh, everyone who lives in our druid circle, I'm going to pull up some names. Uh, Marine Sek, who is the guardian of the druidic circle down here. We're like, hey, Marine, uh, we all had the same dream where there were these really weird acid-blooded ant monsters. That was real scary. What the hell is going on? And she's like, I don't know, but you know, there's some other weird stuff going on. Irrigan up here has been, uh, Digging a moat and diverting a nearby lake to do so, and us being protectors of nature are like, hey, F that, that's really lame. But we're like, wait a second. If me being try trying to be intuitive as a player and as a character, as a, as a high wisdom character, I feel like it should be pretty intuitive. I'm like, wait a second. If we had this weird prophecy vision of like alien ant monsters, what if someone in Irrigan did too, especially someone important, and they're trying to wall off, the, like they already have really tall walls, like they're already a really well defended city against the wilderness, and now they're taking extra precautions just now, the same time that we're having premonitions. This is probably related. Also, we get this quest saying, hey, you know, down to the bottom, uh, down a little bit to the south, uh, just a couple of miles, um, one of our scouts has been injured very heavily and reported that stuff was really weird 
And so we traipsed down there after we waken up, uh, waking up from our crazy nightmare dream or whatever. And uh, yep, he's been poisoned and super hurt. And our paladin just goes lay on hands or whatever it's actually called, channel divinity. I don't know something. Uh, whatever paladins do to heal people out of a pool of crazy healing pools, warding is good. Uh, so our wonderful, wonderful, amazing paladin bro goes, "Yep, don't worry, guys. My name is Davos, and you're healed." And everyone goes, "What the hell was that?" And we're like, "Yeah, he does that. It's no big deal. Don't worry about it, guys." And they're like, "No, seriously, what?" And we're like, "We've got to go kill something." And so we're like, "Okay, great, let's go." Uh, we find a bear that's like really weird and like like. It's like it's been plagued or something. This bear is very strange. It's something's wrong with it. Its fur is all wrong, and uh, us, the three of us, as well as like six more wood elf sort of soldiers, come with us. And this whole like you know dirty half dozen or so, uh, we run down and we see this bear who looks really weird and is very feral and you know rabies and whatnot kind of thing going on. We fight it. And part of the fight, uh, the bear just gets shedded like an exoskeleton, and this ant monster comes out. Same one we've seen in our dream. We're like, holy crap, they're real. This is nuts. There's alien invading ant monsters, and they bleed for 1d10 when you hit them. And when they die, they hit everyone for like another 2 or 3d10. And it's like incredibly nutty. And thankfully, I'm ranged at my 10 max HP, but holy crap. Um, it's where our druid learns how to fight as a druid. He like throws some darts at the beginning, then tries to use his quarterstaff and our paladin. Uh, you know, figures out that, you know, he can swing his sword real good and uh, half of our wood elf friends die outright getting just evaporated in acid baths and, well, eventually we do kill it, but yeah, half our elf scouts died and, uh, yeah, the bear just like, just like in the movie Alien, realistically, just the, the ant comes out and we kill it and we're like, holy crap, that was nuts. Um, that would have ended the first session about then. We all gained enough XP to become level 2. He's just trying to basically rush us to level 3 to start the adventures for real with actual character powers. Uh, but we killed that thing, and we're like, that was nutty, and we all gained a bunch of XP. And the session ends. We come back in a session 2, still running through the wilderness down here, and uh, we say, okay, well, a lot of us are good at survival tools. We're all, you know, we live in the wilderness. This kind of happens a lot. Uh, we cut off a leg of the this ant monster. We cut off a leg of the bear in case there's a tissue sample that they want for something, and we bring everything back into the town. Well, as we start walking back into the town, um, we notice that a, a lot of people that we kind of recognize, like it's a bunch of wood elves, there's a bunch of wood elves, like, kind of hiding amongst the trees, like, they're armed, they're, they're, you know, half of them are, like, actually aiming at us, and half of them are just very uneasy looking, and we're just kind of walking back alongside the rest of the troop, and it's very clear that there's something uneasy here, but we don't have anywhere else to go, so we just walk back to town, and uh, we get there, and uh, once again, the, the guardian of the druidic circle, Marine Sec, goes, hey, um, we need you guys to s chill for a second, I want to talk with uh, Davos, with Davos Hellsbane, the the paladin, and we're like, well, we're not just gonna argue. We're second level. There's a lot of you guys. All right, Davos. Good luck, buddy. And so she leads Davos off to the side, and okay, we, he's still kind of in eyesight, but not really in earshot. And we're just kind of waiting. It's like pouring down rain at this point. There's you know lots of inclement weather and everything, and. Um, Mirin, the guardian, who's uh, ostensibly a druid, it is a druidic circle that we're a part of, uh, shapeshifts into like this gigantic, like 15 foot long dire wolf. And it's like, she's really good at being a druid. She's really good at being a druid. That is a gigantic wolf. Um, and they have some kind of like pseudo dream sequence, pseudo real life thing going on where like. I mean, we're, as players, in earshot to hear the DM explain this, but, like, he is in this, you know, weird sort of trance where, like, the she speaks to him and his god, kind of, and she's like, what, who do you serve? What is your god supposed to be doing? What kind of paladin are you? She's kind of aware of what god magic is, and uh, maybe the other people aren't quite as up with it, but... She leads a druid circle. She's the guardian. She knows what's up. And he goes, well, no, it's a lawful good paladin. I want to do good in the world. I want to make sure everything is fine. And, you know, yada, yada, yada. I'm a good person. She goes, okay, that's fair. And just out of nowhere furnishes a shield. And the shield has a really cool logo on it. I drew a uh, half smiley face here. Um, I forget what's actually on it. But basically she's like, magic shield, here you go, buddy. And he's like, okay. Um... So now he's got himself this nice looking shield to replace the one he had. I mean, he already had a shield. I think paladins could start with a shield, but either way, he's got like a new shield that like um, 
And she just handed to him and said, yeah, you can keep serving your deity because your deity kind of serves my needs in, in the sense that our interests are aligned. So that's cool. I won't smite you here for being a, a paladin, basically. Um, so this guy's obviously one in a billion. And cool, we have a paladin that our people are cool with on our side. And we're pretty happy about this one. Uh, Keanu, of course, learns how to, how to wild shape as he's a moon druid. And I hit level two, which gives me nothing of importance as a hunter. Oh, I learned Hunter's Mark, which is, you know, fun. Uh, and I learned to detect magic. So I can ritual detect magic, which is kind of nice. Okay, so that's wonderful. That was the beginning or end of our second session or something like that. Uh, yeah, so our second session uh, comes in and um, we, we come back from everything else. And, uh, you know, that whole episode happens where our paladin is allowed to exist and everything else. And we start and, and uh, our, the leader again, Maureen, says, okay, here, I'm just going to, I'm going to give us a, uh, I'm going to draw us Maureen. We're going to, we're going to put this person in. So Maureen is also a druid. So we're going to pick um, another green color and uh, Maureen. Oh, that's the color white. I don't want to do that. I want the color green. Great. Here we go. Garish green. Here is Maureen. Maureen uh, has uh, nice flowing long hair. We're going to draw the rest of the body first, though. Uh, she's very short, but very wide. Um, for hair color, let's go with some kind of orangish. It's very nice looking hair, trust me. Um, we're going to give her uh, a mohawk just because we can. It's, it's not canon, but uh, there's, there's our mohawk. Uh, she can also turn into a very large wolf. I'm going to pretend that it's white. I don't actually know if it is, but that's the color I'm choosing, so... Uh, here we go. This wolf is bigger than the other wolf, uh, as you can tell from how longer it is. Uh, there's the feet. Uh, there's the tail. Uh, and we, of course, need the color red to draw blood on the teeth. Rar. This wolf knows how to eat things. All right. And once again, her name is in the color of white. Marine. Marine Sec. Great. We've done it. So that's the Leah that we've been talking to. Uh, she can be a giant wolf, a bigger wolf than our other guy can. She's pretty much a badass. That's awesome. Okay, so dream sequence happens. Uh, we get told then, hey, guys, we've got two quests that we could go on. Uh, well, we notice that Irrigan are being absolute jerks. There's Irrigan up there. Uh, and we've noticed that uh, the scouts we've sent up to the north have disappeared and Again, we know that Irrigan is at odds with the wilderness, but ostensibly we probably have to investigate Irrigan and see where our scouts might have gone. They were probably captured more so than killed, if I, my memory serves properly. Might have forgotten exactly how that works, but uh, yeah, scouts to the north have disappeared, and that's not a good thing. Uh, also, we have noted that there have been orcish war bands that normally you know, inhibit the south, maybe the southeast a little bit. Uh, that have been encroaching farther north than usual, and that's very upsetting because the orcs are freaking scary, and oh my gosh, they are very scary. And so we say, okay, well, I chime in, guys, I don't really want to go to Irrigan. I don't really explain my gambling debts to the other players, but uh, I really don't want to go to Irrigan, so we don't. And we instead start traipsing down to the southeast to, explain, uh, to see what could be going on down here with the Orcish Warbands. Well, thankfully, um, our Moon Druid can wild shape into a direwolf who has advantage when using scent to track prey. And we, of course, can track uh, where our scouts had gone down to the southeast as they went missing trying to track orc uh, movements. And I am a hunter whose favorite enemy is humanoid, meaning that I also have advantage in tracking um, any humanoid. I had done it to pick orcs, but I can track my fellow wood elves as well. And so between the two of us wood elves, we do a very good job of tracking uh, what was going on. And we end up traipsing out, uh, sort of, let me see if I can get a smaller size onto this one. Uh, let's go ahead and pick the color black. And we kind of traipse out. Uh, oh, I did it wrong. One second. There we go. And we kind of traipse around this way, right? And we're like, hey, what can we find? What can we find? And we end up coming across uh, a campsite that is normally used by our uh, Wood Elf Scouts. And there's nothing to be seen. But we see the, the tracks move on. And we go farther and farther and farther. And we find, you know, around here a wrecked caravan. And we're like, OK, we've uh, reached the edge of the woods. There's a wrecked caravan here. And uh, we look around and we're like, well, that was like, it probably was, you know, up to maybe, you know, here, like actually where the roads are. But again, my map is not to scale. So, you know, we traipse around, we get to somewhere near the roads, whatever, pretend my map makes sense. And we see a wrecked caravan and I'm like, ooh, okay, wow. Uh, signs of a struggle. Clearly there's a couple of dead bodies and tracks of a lot of people being uh, dragged away. So people are being captured. Um, and we assume this is by the Orcish war band, but we don't, you know, see any of, any of our people here. 
Um, as we sift through all the rubble and everything, we find a, a lock box with some currency in it that's been untouched. That seems to be there. Uh, most of the equipment in the caravan is like parts of weapons, but not like fully forged. It's like there's hilts and blades, but not put together. So they're kind of useless to us. Um, so we don't take much of anything, but we get some money as we pry open the lock box. Um, and I spend time ritual casting tech magic to see if uh, there's anything magical within the wares. Um, what I do find is that there is a residue of magic, that there's been like some evocation spells, you know, fire bolts and whatnot uh, have been spent around here. So it's like, okay, crap, there is uh, there is magic used in this raid in the war band. Orcs aren't typically mages. This is weird. So, uh, uh, you know, there's mages involved in taking over this caravan. That's crazy. Okay, so we follow the tracks, you know, and we, we go back and we notice that it splits into two. Uh, there is uh, a small split uh, where um, we notice sort of what looks like a smaller congregation of people are going this way and a much larger split where a, a much larger party was split. And we're like, well, yeah, let's let's track down the larger split because uh, maybe that's where they took the survivors. And I mean, again, fighting Orcish Warbands is hard. Maybe we can free the survivors and if we can free them, they'll help us fight and we can we can take over the orcs and and, you know, figure out what was going on here. We happen across a gigantic orcish war camp, like 60 people strong. Uh, this big old thing here, uh, there is uh, some very strangely yellow campfires. Uh, there's a bunch of tents. Uh, and we also discover these really crazy looking uh, tracks. These like very large, like bat-like footprints, but much larger than any bat we've ever seen. Also, they're walking as opposed to flying. Why are there giant walking bats near where we think the orcs might be? And in fact, as we kind of look around the orcish war camp, I start getting very nervous, like, guys, there must be patrols around here. Let's leave before we get caught. This is really, really scary. I don't want to die to some orcs. I've already been told that you need a party of like 20 people to stop one small war band. This is an entire camp. I don't want to be here, guys. I really don't want to be here. DM rolls a d20 kind of... Guys, I really don't want to be here. Really don't want to be here. Really don't want to be here. After looking at the camp for another 20 seconds or so, we're like, okay, let's turn around to leave. And he goes, okay, well, as you turn around, uh, you, with the best perception, uh, have noticed, because you're uh, observant as the feet uh, to uh, Keanu leaves, goes, you're observant, uh, there is an orc riding a gigantic 10-foot-tall bat, like, 60 feet away from you. He hasn't seen you yet. Okay, everyone hide. Roll d20s. Okay, we hide. Wait, I'm going to go past. Out he goes. Okay. We haven't been found. We're okay. We're alive. Cool, he's gone. Let's get out of here. This is way too many orcs for us to deal with. There's no chance at all. We don't have a lot of tricks. Let's get out. Okay. In the meantime, well, it's starting to get a little bit darker out. We've been traipsing around the world. Maybe we should uh, take our path back and go back to home. Maybe we should go back home. And we'll, we'll pick up the other trail a bit later on. We didn't see any of the captives. We didn't see anything they might have taken. Uh, there was like a big uh, like stable or bestiary over there, which we assumed was where the bats were being held. Uh, there were a bunch of camps that, you know, the orc could have slept in. You know, big staging area for the orcs. So we go back to town. We go back to town. We go back to town. And we get most of the way to town. We get about here. We're about an hour's travel away. It's almost nightfall. And one other thing the DM had us do in session zero was say, explain to us, you guys weren't always a party of three. You used to be a party of four. And we say, oh, it was one of the, char one of the characters that uh, one of our players was going to be. Like our paladin was going to be a druid. Um, or sorry, our paladin was going to be a barbarian or a paladin. We said, great, you're, you were going to be a barbarian. The barbarian is our fourth party member. He's like, cool. You see the fourth party member just standing in the road in front of you. And you're like, we know you died. Like, we saw you, like holding off an orcish war band so that we could escape with our lives because we were outnumbered. You you died for the party in session zero. Um, how are you here? And he's like, he's beckoning to you. He's telling you, come here. And we're like, well, ooh, before that happened, sorry. Before we come across a Jake, our mything, our, our fourth and dead party member, uh, we also came across one other thing in the wilderness. We're still second level. We're traveling back and he goes, you come across three orcs and a gigantic, like, 10-foot-long direwolf in combat. 
it's 100 feet away from you. They don't see you at all. It's heavy rain. You're not making enough noise to get over the, the, the sound of the rain. It's, it's getting kind of dark out. They don't see you. You're obscured. But there's three orcs fighting a giant wolf. And he's like, and you know from your travels, this is a wolf you would have hid from. You could not have fought this wolf. And uh, trust me, again, we talked about the fact that you need 20 people to fight off orcs. And, and I, as a character, relay this to my, to my party. My backstory, I would have actually seen them being a caravan guard. Uh, if I didn't explain that, my backstory is that I was also a caravan guard, and I would have run into these guys. Um, he's like, okay, uh, well, there's three orcs fighting them. What do you guys want to do? And the other two are like, well, we're a little bit of nature lovers. I guess my character is too. Let's see if we can, like, help the wolf and, like, fight off the orcs because we hate orcs more than we hate wolves. And I'm like, okay, but the wolf isn't going to be our friend. It's just a feral wolf. But okay, sure, fine. I'm like, well... Uh, I'll, I'll hold an arrow, and if my party enters combat, I'll, I'll fire an arrow. But I'm not, I'm not starting combat until we know more what's going on. Um, also, can we see like who's winning? Like, can we, can we surmise what's going on here? Uh, and we roll really low on like insight and perception and stuff and, and everything else to try to figure out who's actually winning the fight. And he's like, nope, you don't have any idea. You got, you got nothing. So the party members start walking forward. I hang back because I have 11 max HP. 11 max HP um, at second level at this point. So that's not going to work. Uh, so I just hang back. I've got my sharpshooter. I've got my longbow. I'm ready to go with my plus three damage. Um, and, you know, the wolf, like, grabs a big chunk out of one of the, the orcs, you know, clamps down. It's a huge, you know, let's say challenge rating three wolf or something. And things massive. Uh, does a whole bunch of damage. And then he's like, cool. And you see where the orc in the middle just, like, casts some kind of spell and, like, lay his hands on... Uh, on the uh, on the orc to his right that had just been bitten, and we're like, so he's a healer. He's some kind of mage. Okay, well I know D and D one one. We should kill the mage first. We should definitely kill the mage. And so we start running forward. We start running forward, and we enter combat more or less on the side of the wolf. Um, and so they 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 go after the orc on the side, and the orc turns and goes, hey, there's suddenly a a, a moon druid who's shape shifted into a wolf here. Uh, I will turn and attack you, and on his first turn, the orc hexes our wolf, and we're like, "The f this orc is a warlock with a great sword," and then swings with the great sword and rolls like five damage dice after hitting. I'm not even kidding; just like just an army of dice comes down, and just like, that's a lot of damage. He hits for like twenty damage on his first roll. I would have been knocked out on one attack. Thankfully, Moon Druids are BS, and he has like 36 HP as a Dire Wolf challenge rating 1, and he's fine, like tanks the damage, goes, ow, that hurt a little bit, and then like the fight continues. And our Paladin joins in and, you know, throws in some Divine Smite damage, and they, they wear down this guy, and they knock the first one down. After he's, after he's done hexing, the next turn around, he comes in, does something else, and drops concentration on hex, and does some other kind of buff, and he adds like another damage die to his roll, and like brings our, our party down to like 5 HP in the front line, and goes, that was nuts, that was insane. Meanwhile, like turns go back and forth, and sometimes they miss, sometimes they hit and do a million damage. I'm trying to find the weakest member of the party uh, to go after. I end up like focus firing the healer that the, um, that the, that the giant die wolf was hitting, and like with Hunter's Mark and, and all this other stuff, I managed to sink a couple arrows in, knock one down. We get the second one as well. And finally, at the very end of it all, like we, we just barely knocked down that third orc who's like hitting for like 36 damage in a turn. Well, our party has a great idea since two of them are healers. The druid has a couple of pieces of healing magic and he's unshaped shifted at this point just to be at range. And uh, the paladin comes in, like dumps all of his, uh, his pool of resources into healing the, the dire wolf here. And this dire wolf, again, could like one shot us. It's got multi attack. The hits are for like two d eight each or something stupid. We're already injured from fighting the orcs, and they're like, "I want to heal the dire wolf," uh, and I'm just like hiding back, like I'm not doing anything. I don't want to even be seen right now. Um, after the orcs all die, so they both heal the dire wolf, and the DM has them roll animal handling alongside it. Uh, they both roll like eighteens or something obnoxiously high to animal handling, and he goes, "Okay, the wolf doesn't attack you. It runs off," and we're like. Okay. I'm like, you guys spent like three turns and two spell slots like just spamming heals in this direwolf that was totally ready to fight us. Like, well, I could have just shot it with an arrow. You know, that would have been fine too. But okay, it runs off. The orcs all die. Uh, and we gain something like 700 XP or something to get into level three because those things were that tough. And so we realized that, okay, one, 
Wait, the orcs have magic? That's nuts. Also, like, one's a warlock, one's a druid, and one's some other kind of healing. This is really insane. What the heck is happening? Um, and, like, the commander is even scarier. They, they were, like, gradual sizes of big. Uh, the commander off to the side was the last one that we never really engaged in melee. The, the, the big neutral wolf did all the, the combat there uh, and all the tanking and everything else. But, like, a challenge rating, what felt like three wolf, um, had, like, went one-on-one -on -one against the giant orc, and it was close. Um, so, okay, we managed to win that fight. We get to level three, and then we're like, okay, cool. Now we start walking back. So we keep walking back after the after the giant orc wolf encounter, and again, our, our party member Jake is like, hey, come here, Look, come hang out with us. And we're like, okay, and, and Keanu's like, I don't want to do that. I uh, This feels really, really unsafe. He's like, I, I'm out of wild shape charges. We haven't rested yet. It's getting close to nightfall. We could, we could make it back to camp before it's night. This wouldn't be too problem. Oh, also because of how much rain, he all had his rural constitution saves, and two of us failed, and so now we're one level of exhaustion. Um, so two of us are one level of exhaustion for being out in the world for so long. This game is hard. Um, again, he tried to show us that like monsters can do 300 damage in a turn, so this game is hard. Um, and we're like, yeah, I mean, you're right, we want to get back to camp, but at the same time, as a player, I'm like, but Adventure Hook. Uh, and also it's like, but we've seen visions before, and the visions have been warnings more so than directly dangerous. Maybe it's going to be okay. I paused real quick because I forgot one other thing that happened as far as uh, dreams were considered. Um, at the end-ish of session two, when we were about to go find the orc war camp that we eventually did in, in our third session, uh, in session two, we camp for the night, ready to go the next day, and we once again wake up in this crazy dark dungeon cave. And we realize we're actually on more of a big platform, like 100 feet by 100 feet, kind of round and there's lava underneath, like it's it's all lit from underneath as we're in, we're you know kind of floating above a giant bed of lava, kind of like uh, Anakin and I have the high ground, that sort of thing from episode two or whatever. Maybe it was episode three, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Prequel memes hype. Anyway, we figure out that uh, okay, we're in this weird dream sequence, and also we all have super awesome magic weapons. I've got a plus three sick great bow that like can cast lightning bolts and like call down thunderstorms and stuff if I maintain concentration. Uh, our paladin gets a plus three holy avenger and uh, our druid, despite the fact that he's only level two and just now learned how to wild shape, can turn into a freaking blue eyes white dragon. I mean, not literally, but essentially blue eyes white is literally a dragon, not literally blue eyes white dragon. We're not in Yu-Gi-Oh, but becomes this super sick dragon we're like the heck is going on here so keanu leaves is legit is literally a dragon for the rest of the fight and we find more of these ant monsters and there's like four or five of them now as well as some more monsters that we haven't seen before that are also different that kind of running towards us and so this whole group of five or six of them we kind of split off and we start hacking them apart we all get a bunch of extra hp to start the session out because we're ostensibly higher level and just start whacking away at these things we kill them all so, okay cool we got rid of all the underlings then we notice that there's this very large sort of cloaked hooded figure at the far end of the chasm or we're like who the heck is that and anytime we take a look at it he's like roll a wisdom save what yep roll a wisdom save so the first time i do that i fail and he's like you're terrified you're gonna run away from him and i'm like yes i am i'm terrified i'm running away from that dark weird creepy figure okay eventually i make my save and he's like okay you finally get a good look at him You've, you've made your save, you're no longer terrified. It's this floating, gigantic eye with, like, black tendrils coming out from the sides and all around it, like some weird amoeba kind of thing going on here. And I'm like, I shoot an arrow at it. And I end up rolling really well in combat. I have a plus three bow. I have sharpshooter. I'm doing, with one attack, like 30 damage a turn with Hunter's Mark on that thing. I'm doing beastly damage to this dude. And our paladin's running forward, ready to go do cool Holy Avenger things. We discover that these creatures are uh, technically... Um, Fiends, I believe, because the Holy Avenger gets bonus damage against fiends. He's chopping these things up. The the druid who's a dragon, like on one of his turns, like does a petrifying breath that like just petrifies two of those monsters straight up, so they get one shot by lightning bolts because they instantly fail deck saves being petrified and uh you know starts running in and goes for you know big swipes and he realizes that hey you know what we're best served doing as this chasm is falling apart and rocks are falling from the sky and more and more of it's falling apart and the arena is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking uh he you know picks me up and now i'm riding on a dragon shooting this lightning bow that instead of arrows they're literally lightning bolts coming out it's like super incredibly awesome 
as they shoot lightning bolts, this crazy flying eye thing riding a dragon, which is awesome. And uh, we shoot more and more arrows in the thing. Every time we hit it, it like starts breaking apart, and there's like a gaping hole inside, like the iris, this floating eye, and it's more like a black hole where things start sucking into it, and you see like the blackness of space inside where a, a wound and blood would be. Um, it starts falling apart so much that our paladin gets sucked into the vortex of the eye and just disappears into nowhere. It's like, sorry, Davos, you're dead for now. Um, as we just keep doing damage and damage to the thing, and the, the vortex is bigger and bigger and bigger, and when they eventually both me and my pet dragon get sucked into it, and it's like, and you all wake up. What the heck just happened? We fought crazy eye monsters, and we were we were awesome. I had this sick lightning bow. I was a dragon. It's like, yeah, and you had a flaming sword. What was going on? And the DM goes, also, you all realize none of you recognize each other. None of you looked in the dream like you do in real life. It, well, in real life, in character here at camp. What, sorry? He's like, yeah, and you, like, our paladin was female. Like, and yeah, and when the druid was in druid form, that wasn't the same person. When I was, you know, running around, that wasn't, that didn't look like me. It was some other ranger with the lightning arrows. You're like, what the heck's going on? This is crazy. So this dream sequence of, of, it's not even of the future then because it wasn't even of us. Um... But another detail, and I actually imagine that the other players got this exact same piece of information that I did, is um, we were all informed during session zero that 70 years ago there was a, an event called the Breach. And the Breach was where some crazy monsters from underneath the, the world kind of came up and tried to take over. And, uh, you know, I don't know if all the races came together or not, but something clearly happened. And, uh, you know, the, the Abyss monsters were fought back and, and the world was saved. And I was told that my grandfather, Jay Roon, was uh, incredibly important uh, and integral in the, the defeat of, the, of these abyss monsters during the Breach. That was a really, really big deal. And uh, I don't remember anything about him as a character. I've just been told tales from my family. I don't know what that was about. But as a player, and probably as a character as well, I'm like, do we have dream sequences of our respective ancestors fighting off like the big bad at the end of it all? Like That was insane. And... Seriously, how the heck did a druid become a dragon? That's not normal. So that was all pretty nutty. And that was at the end of the second session. And from that dream sequence on, we, we found the Orcish War Camp. At the war camp, we realized that like their campfires were like a weird yellowish color. And uh, when we got up closer to fighting the orc, when they were uh, you know also fighting that giant dire wolf, that there's this weird yellow glow behind their eyes. And again, they have access to magic that we've never seen orcs have before, at least not the typical barbarian types they are normally. So something really crazy is happening. And you know, caravans are being poached, but they normally are anyway. That's not too out of the ordinary. But Irrigan's digging a moat around itself and all this other stuff's going on. Uh, also, the winter solstice is approaching, or what I think the winter solstice, whatever it is. Um, but some sort of festival or, or special time is happening, and that's uh, part of why uh, the leader of the Druid Circle, Marine, is like, yeah, that might be related. You're probably having visions because it's a special time of year. This is going to be interesting. Giant direwolf and all. Um, and so we, again, kind of back to the present as we're coming back from this orcish war camp and waterlogged and a bit tired and trying to get home for the night so we can talk about the fact that, hey, there's orcs and there's a lot of them. You guys want to kill them? The spectral image of Jake shows up and goes, come here, follow me. We're like, okay, sure. Yeah, well, you know what? Yes, visions have been good to us. They've they've warned us about what's going on in the world. They've never been truly deadly. We've never been actually harmed by them. We just wake up going, what the heck was that? And so we follow Jake, and he takes twists and turns, and it feels like hours following this guy through the, the rain and the dark in the wilderness. And even though I'm a hunter who literally cannot get lost aside from magical means, I am lost. And I'm like, I don't even know where we are anymore. And Jake beckons us forward, like, come on, this is, I need to show you something. And at the end of the session, we, we see him, and we're in a clearing, and then the ground falls up from beneath us, and we all plummet into darkness, and the session ends. So we found orcs with special powers. We've had dream sequences of ant devils or something, abyss monsters, including new abyss monsters we've never seen before in real life. And we've had a dream sequence where we were superpowered and not really each other, a sign of maybe things to come or a sign of the past. And we saw our dead comrade who beckoned us into a never-ending hole in the ground and uh the last thing the dm said this was i mean more to players and to characters like well now the adventure really begins um but for us the comedy he wanted to show us that oh yeah the world is really really dangerous but you know we bit on the adventure hook 
and we're going to find something else. Or it's another dream and we're, again, going to be plunged into darkness and we'll wake up in town somehow. So that is the recap so far of uh, the world of the invading ant monsters or whatever. Again, I need a name for this. You guys are welcome to suggest something. We don't have a name for our party either. That's going to be up to us, I, I imagine. But that is my first attempt at doing a recap of D&D. Three sessions in and it's pretty nutty. Thanks for watching. Give me some feedback. I'm curious what you guys uh, do or don't like about this. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, probably I'll see you next time. Uh, and I'll also at some point cover my other campaign. But uh, it's almost, well, it's 12.30 a.m. And I should be going to bed. Thanks for watching.